In this video we're going to cover Unity's new data-oriented technology stack. We're going to go over what it is, how it works, and what are the benefits. Let's begin! So first of all, DOT stands for Data-Oriented Technology Stack. This is sort of a different way of writing code and thinking of how to set up object logic and data. The main goal of this new paradigm is to have performance by default. Meaning, if you learn how to set up your game this way, you will write cleaner code and experience excellent multi-thread performance, which enables you to make more complex games with more units, more effects, better visuals, and so on. The technology stack is composed of three main components the c -sharp job system, the Entity Component system, and the Burst Compiler. First, the c -sharp job system enables you to take advantage of multi-core processors in order to run several jobs at the same time. One of the main issues with Unity performance has always been due to how the main update thread is single-threaded. So for example, if you have pathfinding for your units, in single-threaded code, first you calculate the path for the first unit, then when that's done, you calculate the path for the second unit, and so on. Whereas with multi-threaded code, you can calculate many paths at the same time depending on the number of cores. So if you have a lot of small independent tasks running in your game, you can massively increase your performance. Writing C-sharp multi-threaded code is always very tricky, since there are many things that can go wrong in seemingly random ways. That can be a nightmare to test and debug. Writing multi-thread code also means you need to manage how many threads you have, how many you should have, and what each of them is doing. So the c -sharp job system manages all that and helps you write simpler code by having you create jobs instead of threads. Then those jobs are run on the threads and the whole thing is managed by the c -sharp job system. This is designed to make it easier to write multi-thread code while reducing complexity and providing several protections from the biggest issues caused by multi-threading like race conditions. So if you learn to write code that can be Javified, you can benefit from massively improved performance. Then the Entity Component System. This is the part that requires a different mindset when writing code. It's all about separating your code between logic and data. Instead of game objects with monobehavior scripts, you have entities, components, and systems. So you have an entity, that entity contains components which hold the data, and the systems apply logic to that data. For example, you have an entity named unit. That entity has a component called position, which holds a x and y value. Then you have a system called move position, which runs on every entity that has a position component and moves its x and y values. Under the hood, what makes this so much more performant has to do with how memory is set up. For a CPU, it's quite expensive to be constantly jumping around in memory. In the normal way, working with game objects, those objects are very heavy and they are located somewhere random in memory. Then each component can be in another place and so on. So as the update thread is running, the CPU is jumping all over the place looking for the memory it needs. Whereas with the entity component system, the memory gets much more packed together in specific groups of components, which boosts performance significantly since the CPU no longer has to jump around in memory in order to find the next object it needs. So again, with regards to code, the main thing you need to understand is how it should be organized. You have entities, components, and systems. Components hold data, systems process that data, and entities refer to individual instances of component data. So you can think about it how it relates to the normal game object system. An entity is like a specific game object. So if you have two game objects in your scene, each of them would be an entity. Components are held by entities and have the data. So just like in the normal way, you have components attached to each game object. In this case, you have components attached to each entity. And finally, the main difference is the systems which act upon the component data. In the normal way, your monobehavior scripts hold the data in variables and also have functions to modify that data. In ECS, they are cleanly separated. An entity refers to a specific instance of components, the components hold data, and the systems modify that data. Following the ECS pattern also makes it easier to write code that can be Javified by the job system, which again, excellent performance. And finally, the last dots component is the burst compiler, which is a piece of really amazing, almost magical technology. It takes all that nice C-sharp code you write and converts it into highly optimized machine code. 
It's especially good at making optimized code from the code generated by the c -sharp job system. The compiler is also smart enough to take advantage of specific optimizations for the specific platform you're compiling for. So for you, all it takes is ticking a box to use it and benefit from massive performance. The better you write your code according to ECS and the job system, the better the performance boost. These are the three components that make up the DOTS data-oriented technology stack. So to summarize, you write your code according to the entity component system, then that code can be jobified to run in multiple threads managed by the c -sharp job system, and then the burst compiler converts those c -sharp jobs into highly optimized machine code. All of that makes up the data-oriented tech stack, or DOTS. So I hope this video helped you understand what DOTS is and how it works. It requires a slight change in thinking, but the potential benefits are immense. I'm currently working on ECS tutorials, so stay tuned for more practical videos on this exciting new technology. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity content. Alright, see you next time!